find an example of a function that satisfies these requirements and draw the graph. I don't mean for you to come up with a formula for such a function. I, I only want you to think about the function's graph, a, a graph of a function which will satisfy, satisfy all, all these conditions. So let's, let's think about what each condition means. So x going to infinity has a limit of 3. What does that mean? There's a 3 and there's a horizontal asymptote and the graph is getting closer and closer to 3. So it's either going that way or that way. It's either one of those two. And then if the limit to negative infinity is infinity, that means that the end behavior is going up. And I guess the easiest one is to use this, these two. Right. Well, what does that mean? Um, f should be decreasing. If, if the derivative is negative, f should be decreasing before 2. And after 2, it should be increasing. So if, if I say this is 2, um, it should be like decreasing up till 2, and then increasing after 2. So I guess it, it's not this one. It has to be like this. So, so if I just have a graph that's doing like that, getting closer and closer to closer and closer to this, that satisfies A, B, E, and F. Okay. So all I need to do now is add the concavity. What does it mean for the second derivative is to be negative? If the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. So we should say if this is negative one, it's like uh, it's like this to be concave down. It should be going up, but uh, concave down means you're you're pushing from the below. So if you push it, it's going to bend like that, right? And then at four, if I say this is four, and if I take this part and push it from push it from, from below the graph will bend like this. Okay. And then between negative 1 to 4, between here and there, it's concave up. Concave up means it's like pushing from above. So if you push it from above, these things will bend like uh, these things will bend like this. So at the end of the day, if you think about a graph that would do this, that will be an example of a graph that satisfies all of them. But this is not the only one. I mean, uh, some of you might do some graph that's more like, that's still fine too. It's like, uh, there, there are many, infinitely many functions that can satisfy this. So all of these answers could be possible. So this could be an answer, that could be an answer. Yes? So where you put it on the y, up and down y, is it does not It doesn't matter. It, it, the only thing that, that li only limitations that you have is probably that because the, the horizontal asymptote is 3, and you have to approach it as, it, as the function increases, this portion of the graph should be below 3. But, I mean, the graph could be easily like, like this one and, and doing that. that. That's still possible. Why can't the left side go above the horizontal asymptote? Uh, I mean, it's okay to cross the horizontal asymptote. Uh, oh, the vertical. The, the, um, so, one of the common myths in drawing the graph is that you're not allowed to pass through cross the vertical asymptotes or horizontal asymptotes. Um, so the, the truth is that if you have a rational function, polynomial over polynomial, then the graph cannot go through the vertical asymptote, but uh, the graph may pass through the horizontal asymptote uh, 
a few times, and the number of times you can cross the horizontal asymptote is one less than the degree of the denominator. So, uh, for example, if you have a graph of y equals to, say, x squared minus 1 over x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5 or something. I, I have no idea what the graph of this is, but um, such a graph may pass through the horizontal asymptote up to twice because this is degree 3 in the denominator. So, um, I mean, the reason that you were told that you can't cross the horizontal asymptote is that's only true when you have uh, AX plus B over CX plus D type. In that case, you're not allowed to pass through the horizontal asymptote. Now, for this graph, you have to pass through the horizontal asymptote because it's going through infinity. It's, it has to be below 3 on, on this portion, and then now you have to go, to go up to infinity, so you have no choice but to pass through the horizontal asymptote. Unless, uh, unless uh, you think of uh, a very special kind of example where you allow the graph to be broken. There, there's no, nothing in here says that the graph should be continuous, right? Because, uh, uh, no, no, it does say, because the second derivative exists everywhere. Uh, so uh, it has to be continuous because it's differential. So, I mean, if you make a continuous graph to do that, then uh, it, it, you, you have no choice but to cross the horizontal asymptote at some point because you have to go to infinity. You have to start from somewhere below 3, and you have to go to infinity. So at some point, you have to cross the horizontal asymptote.